going to speak about uh, game economy, game economy prediction, and a very interesting customer story uh, we made with uh, GameQuint recently. So briefly, for the past 30 years, I'm dealing with data, uh, mostly end-to-end -end business intelligence and analytics as well. Um, I led the BI unit for BWIN in the Israeli office, and then I was director of BI analytics for Playtica. For the past year, I'm working with a few, com few game companies, uh, mostly helping them maximize their uh, data infrastructure and also the uh, KPI performance. And I found out two major th things that actually uh, hurts everybody. First is the data. Most All of us want more data. We want accurate data, uh, real-time data. But the other interesting thing is that the most of the problems that blocking companies from growth are related to the game economy itself. So let's talk about game economy. When we're talking about the economy, we're talking about three major forces. The first one is everything related to retention. We give free currency. We give, we pull the users into the game offline through CRM, email marketing, push notification, Facebook notification. We can do it inside the game, but basically we, we create inflation. The other force is the engagement, which reflects the user satisfaction from the game, and all, and mostly help us to drain the game and pull the coins out. This thin balance between the two creates the opportunity, the need, and the good monetization will, create, will match between the two and help us to generate revenues. The thing is, if you think about it, when we create a game economy, it, on high level it looks like this. We have many parameters, a lot of permutation between the two. And if I'll drill down into it, it must basically look like this. Think how many options we can, we can have inside of this. But the thing is that we are different. Different users play the game differently. And we can think of a few segments. We have payers and non-payers. Each one of them basically consume the game differently. We have whales, dolphin, minos. Each one of them are paying differently. Some of them pay frequently. Some of them pay rarely. It's different. We have social and anonymous users. Social users will benefit from everything that the social world can benefit them. It's Facebook gifts, it's user-to-user -user gifts. It has a direct effect on the economy. Anonymous play users are play on a more isolated environment. We have the bonus seekers. From my experience, I found out in almost every company I work with, almost 20 to 30% of the users are coming into the game and just collecting the bonus and live and play like on, over the weekend. It reflects a different game. So, if I'll pinpoint it into three major pains, I can think of cost, because trying to figure what is the best configuration takes time. If we want to know what will be the retention in 30 days after we change something, we need to wait 30 days at least. We need users make change and have a significant impact. We need a lot of users. Users do cost money. There is a high uncertainty of what or how the change that we are going to do is going to affect the game. There are not so many game economists out there, and companies, usually when they try to hunt someone, it takes a long time. There are no not off-the-shelf solutions for this. And the third one is doing a wrong monitoring for your economy contains a high risk. If you're not tracking your balance properly, you can see a flat line, but basically, theoretically, you can see your, your, your new user's balance spiking up and you maybe won't understand why you're not converting in real time. What if we can take all of this and simulate millions of users to have significant information? What if we can generate the data itself? We, not, we don't need to wait 30 days in order to see the 30-day retention. We don't need seven days in order to see our lifetime value for the first seven, for the first seven days. What if we can test hundreds more hypotheses regarding our game economy? Think about it. Before I'm going to the solution that we applied, I want to give you the, our customer success with GamePoint. So GamePoint is an amazing company, operate more than 18 years with 350,000 daily active users, more than 7,000, 705,000 monthly active users, operating six different games, and we started with their uh, bingo game. So. When we started to analyze the game, we saw a very high ARP DAO. GamePoint is doing a very good monetization with a very nice paying users, uh, uh, conversions of paying users to daily active users. 
However, when we looked at the game, the game contained a level system, but it was not beneficiary for the user. They were not received any special uh, bonus or gift once they progressed. The shop was static. There was no progression according to the level. And this is one of the things that we wanted to tackle. We analyzed the user distribution, and we saw that most of the users were held on the first, uh, on the first level of the game. Uh, GamePoint is managing a uh, very interesting uh, VIP program, which is a subscription-based. And we see that the most of the uh, heavy users, you can see that the pink ones are locating on the, on the progressing part of the game. We analyzed the shop, and we saw, we saw a very interesting trend, which is what we expect. You can see uh, a positive trend that as long as users are progressing in the game, they are moving to a higher uh, price point. All of this gave us a very... Uh, positive indication that we are we can apply a interesting progression system into the game and it will have a positive effect so before we start we try to frame the requirements from the from the customer from game point basically game point wants to grow part of the strategy for that was creating a short and mid-term retention because the long-term retention was quite good we were focusing on the first uh, 30 day we plan to integrate a real progression mechanism into the game, and of course, making an engagement, make it higher. For bingo, it means more round played, more cards, and a movement to a higher rounds, consider a higher wagering. However, since this is a live game with a lot of users, there were a few concerns that we had to tackle. The first one, there are heavy loyal users playing the game for many years, and we, we needed to protect them and not uh, create any kind of a negative effect. Uh, the game is, a, is a social. There is an in-game chat, and of course, it's operate in Facebook. So we had to uh, sort of frame the effect that we're doing and make sure that there is no uh, a negative uh, trend, if any. And of course, adjust the shop to the game progression. Now, once we frame this, these points, we were started to think how we can simulate this. The, the thir first thing we tried to analyze, what will happen once uh, the progression will go live. We held some kind of a risk management. We took the user who play on few games as well in parallel, playing uh, other games uh, of game point, and we uh, frame it to our, like a risk management uh, in, in money. We tried to project what will be the first out of coin point as a strategy to convert users as soon as possible. How the progression users will look like, will they actually going to use uh, the, the benefit of progressing in the game and start uh, open <coughs> higher room uh, as long as they progress? How will the monetization, monetization and sale cycle performs? As you all know, when, near, when we are running a sale, we expect to see a hype, but then there is the cooldown. The sale is effective only if the hype is bigger than the, the cooldown and the delta afterwards. And this is one of the things that we had to tackle. So we're starting with the simulation practice. The first, we took the game economy, as I showed you before. Then we defined the game flow. We defined few segments, as in the game. And then using some machine learning algorithm, we, we tried to play with many manipulation of users and different configuration and different game flows. We got an insight. We optimized and run it and run it and run it. We, we ran it a few dozens of times. And this was the prediction of how users will open the game. The, the color here are a bit light, but whatever. We, said, we saw that, as expected, user will progress in the game uh, faster as they will progress in levels. In reality, <laughs> the left one reflects what is currently happening in the game, and the left one is what happened after we launched the level progression mechanism. The matching between, between the pr predictive uh, insight and the actual one was about 80 to 85%. Then we tried to predict when will users run out of coins? So we made a few dozen predictions, playing with the sign-up bonus, playing with the level-up mechanism, playing with the hourly gift, playing with few metrics, even with the uh, experience points needed to level up, and we create few predictions. The result so far was very interesting. We were able to increase retention between 30 to 55% across different platforms and different regions. The playtime for the new user increased the median increased by almost 70%, and also the number of rounds played in the first session by new users was increased by 30%. We are now the next uh, steps that we're analyzing what will be the effect on the conversion itself, because there is always, when you give something free, you expect to see some effect on the conversion, and this is one of the things that we are uh, now looking forward.
Thank you for listening.